Hey guys, it's Bianca from The Closet Historian, and today I wanted to talk about feeling costumey in vintage, whatever, you know, costumey means. And I know that some people feel like they're wearing too much of a costume when they start, first start wearing vintage style, maybe they're not used to kind of such a full-on look, or people in their life are commenting that they look like they're wearing a costume, or people at the store will ask you, you know, are you in a play, or it's not Halloween yet, and things like that. So I know that vintage style, being quite an all-encompassing style from head to toe, it's very different than what a lot of people wear these days um, and wear commonly now. So you might get some costumey comments and maybe you're trying to avoid looking too costumey. So today I just wanted to give you guys some tips and tricks on feeling a little bit less costumey in your vintage um, style and then also just kind of talking about the subject in general and dealing with that. So of course when you're wearing vintage style, um, usually you want people to react like, oh, she must wear vintage style as opposed to, oh, why are you wearing a costume? So that's kind of the reaction or not the reaction you're looking for. You're looking to avoid people think you're wearing a costume. Some people are just not familiar with vintage style or alternative styles in general and so of course anything that looks out of order to them is gonna look costumey and you can't really help that you're gonna get attention if you're wearing stuff that's out of the norm uh, in any way. So if you're wearing vintage style out and about and people aren't used to that, then you know they're gonna make weird comments sometimes. And that's just kind of part of wearing vintage style out and about. So it's something you kind of have to deal with if you're gonna wear vintage, even though of course most people aren't looking for extra attention. I know I'm certainly not looking for attention, but uh, you do get nice comments and you do get weird comments sometimes. Um, the nicest things I get are like from little ladies who are like, I used to dress this way or, um, my mom used to dress this way. I always liked that, but sometimes you'll get like weird comments from men. The worst one I ever got was, uh, don't you think the 50s were such a much better time? And I wanted to be like, no, of course not. Thank you. This world is sexist and racist enough without me trying to live in the 50s. I don't think I could handle it. So, you know, you get some weird comments out there and just to be prepared for that. So my first tip on looking not costumey is to avoid sort of the major cliches and stereotypes for the decades that you're wearing. So if you're wearing 1920s clothes, for example, wearing more everyday fabrics and styles, uh, things that are more casual in some ways, people are gonna associate sequined little flapper dresses with costuming now because after the Great Gatsby and everything, that became a pretty big Halloween costume. So the Halloween store is gonna sell short fringed 20s dresses. And like, maybe you like those dresses, but that is more likely to get the sort of costumey uh, like sort of association with it. And the same with goes for 1950s looks. So like because of Grease and like some 1950s movies, there are 1950s girl costumes at the Halloween store. So if you wanna avoid like a pink poodle skirt with a white shirt, ponytails with a scarf in it, or just like super Lucille ball, like just polka dots, navy and white, navy black and white dresses, that's all likely to come off as more costumey to an outsider. Like we know that a lot of that stuff definitely was around in the 50s or definitely was around in the 20s, but because people perceive that and understand it to be something you can dress up as, when you're wearing clothes like that, they might be seeing you as if you are wearing a costume. So it's just good to avoid things that are the super, super stereotypical things or styles associated with a decade if you want to avoid lots of costumey comments. Maybe you, if you like that look, wear it and rock it. Just know that other people are gonna perceive that is more costumey than perhaps you, you know, know it to be. The other thing about costumes, the actual costumes, like retro costumes, as people think 1950s girl is a Halloween costume, I guess, is that that kind of stuff is gonna be made with really cheap quality materials. Like the costumes you buy in a costume shop are like really cheap polyester, um, super, super cheap materials and cheap construction. So if you buy, like say a reproduction dress, like they have a lot of repro on eBay or on Amazon that's super cheap, like $12. Everything's probably made in China and it's, you know, great for a beginner if you are on a budget, but look out for the cheaper materials because cheaper materials and like a cheaper material dress, like a polyester dress, plus maybe a super cliched like polka dot print is going to read very costumey just because costumes are usually made with cheap fabric. So if you can get a natural fiber, like a cotton, that's going to do a lot better. But anything that's like sort of shiny or polyester is going to look more costumey than true vintage. And I totally am an advocate for, if you can afford and wear real vintage clothes, go for it. Um, but also of reproduction. So I love reproduction and I love sewing your own, uh, like people who sew their own reproduction clothes. I think that's totally fine. I'm not a vintage purist at all. It really bothers me actually. But, and I know people are starting out, you're on a budget, you wanna get some dresses and like, I know those are super cheap options, but just look out for that costumey sort of trope inherent in the 
lower quality fabrics mixed with stereotypical prints and patterns like that. The other thing about that is, again, be careful with reproduction. Even many like big retro reproduction companies, they make a lot of very cliche pinup-y style stuff. So it's gonna be a lot of like cherry prints on black, polka dots, um, there's red, black, navy, and white. Like those are the colors that everyone chooses. So if you have something that's kind of outside of that, maybe a different kind of floral print, or a just like a different color solid that's not one of the main ones that they always do. So a lot of repro companies have make very similar clothing. Then once you kind of break out of that or you can find things that are a little bit different colors or different prints, that's gonna help avoid that sort of cost me cliche look as well. And I'm again, if you love polka dot 50s dresses, wear them and rock them. But this is just tips for people who feel like they are getting too many cost me comments. Many people don't understand what era you're wearing um, unless they latch onto one particular detail. Like they know full skirted polka dot dress, they think, oh, I love Lucy, they think costume. So you just kind of, not that you need to dress to please other people around you, it's just something to keep in mind. Another thing to consider is mixing your retro and vintage style clothing with modern stuff. A lot of mainstream fashion advice for wearing vintage is this, is just to wear one vintage piece and mix it with the rest modern. But I think almost you can look just as costumey wearing just a vintage dress and then everything else be modern and have your hair straight and everything. I think that looks almost just as costumey as a full on vintage look in the sense that a lot of people when they're doing a costume don't, they haven't researched a lot so they might mix a lot of modern with a vintage dress or a vintage outfit. So I feel like a vintage outfit that is not styled in a vintage way has the potential to look just as costumey as something that's completely styled in a completely head to toe 1940s look. And I think almost vintage can look more out of place when it's styled modern uh, or completely modern. I just think that that's a good point. Like a lot of people say, just wear one vintage piece. And I think wear the full on vintage look if you want to, mix eras if you want to, or wear all one era in one outfit. Uh, just make it an entirely, entirely 40s outfit or entirely 20s outfit. Um, I don't think you have to mix and match in order to not look costumey. You can just look like you wear 1940s style and no one's gonna think you're wearing a costume. Okay, a couple of people are gonna think you're wearing a costume, but those people are outliers. And so you just have to just expect that at that point. But I don't think one or the other is necessarily better or less costumey. So another thing you can do to feel less costumey is to wear things that still fit with the current trends that are going on, but that are vintage. So for example, like wicker and straw handbags were really in with like the fashion set this last spring and summer, but obviously they're usually a vintage item. And so you can wear your wicker bags and feel like you're on trend while still wearing vintage. And that's a way to feel a little bit less costumey is to wear things that are also currently in style and also fit with your retro style. So like midi skirts have been in for a couple of years now, longer length skirts. And that's something that's very late 40s, early 50s already. So it's something you might have in your retro wardrobe that you can wear now and it looks like you're not only current, but also uh, vintage as well. So it's kind of a good middle point to feel a little bit less costumey because you're still following modern trends in some ways, even though you're wearing vintage clothes. Another thing that I think helps is wearing things that are more everyday clothing or things that you see in like family photographs or candids and things like that. The full on glamour aesthetic is so awesome and especially great for evening or for events. But the more dressed up you are, the more out of place you're gonna seem next to people wearing, you know, yoga pants and a t-shirt. So just keep that in mind. Maybe just look into vintage style denim or vintage style like casual wear to see what you can wear to feel a little bit more in keeping with the social uh, sort of zeitgeist of what people are wearing in, in accordance to formality. A lot of people, you know, to them gloves, hats are gonna seem super strange. So you're gonna get costumey comments, but I don't think you necessarily have to look costumey. Again, the nicer stuff that you get, or if you make it yourself to look really more like a vintage piece, it's a lot of the cheaper reproduction or cheaper like knockoff vintage -y items that are gonna get the really costumey look. Like I'm thinking of like, really bad like fascinators with like veiling that's like super stiff. Like that's gonna look a lot more costumey than an actual vintage hat will and vintage hats cost nearly the same. You can find vintage hats for $10 and those little cheap fascinators for $10, go for the vintage hat. It's gonna give you just a more authentic look that's gonna look more like you like vintage style and less like you're trying to wear a costume. So those are kind of my general tips for feeling less costumey. It, there's not that much you can really do, but the more, the less cliched and stereotypical looks you go for, the better it's gonna come off as less costumey, I feel like. Um, even if you're wearing head to toe vintage style, if you're in like a suit and like vintage styled accessories, I feel like people don't perceive that as much of a costume as if you're in like a poodle skirt or like very stereotypical items like that. So these are my general tips. If you guys have any tips for this kind of um, 
dilemma or any ideas about how you feel costumey or not costumey wearing wedding ring style, please leave them in the comments below and I'll be happy to discuss it because I feel like it's definitely a discussion uh, kind of topic that we can all sort of converse about or commiserate about. And uh, thanks you guys for watching today and I'll see you again soon. Bye.